to you, Mr. Ablakwa. Just your brief comment on this because we need to really talk about the other uh, issues that are going to affect us, really, in this year's general election. What's your thoughts on what uh, Mr. Shikata is saying? Well, good evening. First of all, I think it is important to celebrate uh, Uncle Chachi Chikata on this matter. He has put up such a spirited defense of the people of Santro Kofi, Akbafu, Lolobi, and Lipe. A man of considerable age, he has on a, virtually on a daily basis pursued this matter for the last four years. I remember that he was in the high court in Ho, mm. had to be traveling. Yeah. You know, the risk involved, the, the distance, the inconvenience and all of that. And I think that uh, senior citizens like him, statesmen, par excellence like him, who, you know, dedicate themselves and sacrifice so that our constitution will be respected and the rights of citizens will be respected, ought to be celebrated. And I think that tonight, uh, I know he doesn't like these things. He's very, you know, modest and doesn't like to be praised. But, I mean... Uh, I am inspired by, by, by his, uh, his, his spirited defense mm. of the people of, of Sa. And look, let's be honest. This is a matter that clearly falls within the realm of gerrymandering. It was clear from the outset that there was an agenda. And that agenda was to facilitate the victory of the ruling government in Hohoi. And that is what became the outcome. I hold in my hands a petition from this joint steering committee of the Akpafu and Lolobi traditional areas. On the 27th of November 2020, they wrote to the Electoral Commission seeking clarity on this matter. It reads, the Joint Steering Committee of the Akpafu and Lolobi traditional areas by this petition respectfully seek urgent clarification an assurance over the electoral status and voting mandates in the upcoming 2020 elections. This is to prevent discrimination and disenfranchisement of our people by administrative muddling on technicalities. By our reckoning and all indications, we remain part of the electoral areas under the Hohoi constituency. By our reckoning and all indications, we remain part of the electoral areas under the Hohoi constituencies in the Hohoi district of the Volta region. In the current electoral cycle, we are surprised to find in the published voters' register that we are assigned to Jassican district, with which we have had no prior history, mandate, or engagement at the primaries. You must be aware that we were lumped into the new OT region in error and against our express wishes, which matter is currently before the law courts. And they mm. continued. Now, the Electoral Commission... And this is despite the referendum that was organized exactly. where 50% of the people in these respective mm -hmm. areas participated. Exactly. The Electoral Commission then met this eminent group and assured them that you will vote, you have no qualms, no fears at all, be rest assured. Only for this press release on the eve of the election by the Electoral Commission, confirming their fears. The Electoral Commission issued this statement, a copy of which I have in my hands, saying that the Commission wishes to announce for the information of the general public, especially voters in the Boehm constituency, that the 7 December 2020 presidential parliamentary election will take place in the Boehm constituency as scheduled from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. However, as a result of the creation of the Guan District level local government, Guan District Assembly Establishment Instrument 2020, and pending the creation of the Guan constituency, eligible voters in the Guan District will vote only in the presidential election but not in the parliamentary election, in the Boehm constituency. Voters in the Guan district are to take note of this directive from the Electoral Commission. So from what you're reading and your, uh, your, your, your thought pattern, as it were, you seem to agree with Mr. Absolutely. Chikata that Absolutely. this was uh, intentionally done to disenfranchise Absolutely. the people Absolutely. of Absolutely. of Absolutely. This is a clear case of gerrymandering, which denied the people of the Article 42 rights. Look, Article 42 of our constitution is very clear. The right to vote in an election... It is a right and it is an entitlement. You see, in your introduction, I heard you say, oh, they now have a good opportunity. No, it's a right. I feel so embarrassed that I have served in this eight parliament, which is not whole, which is not complete. A parliament that did not have four communities represented. And then we say that we are representatives of the people. 
who were just representative of some of the people. Not all the people. It is forever a scar on the conscience of our democracy. Forever a scar on the forever conscience of, on our, and, of and, our democracy. And, and, and this, this should not... Look, you read the 15th May 2024 statement by the Electoral Commission. I mean, it's so appalling, so condemnable. This, the Electoral Commission says that they didn't know that Parliament would go on recess at the time and that because of the recess, they couldn't act. Such gross incompetence. Who does not know the parliamentary calendar in this country? It is published well ahead of time. In any case, our engagement with the Electoral Commission, as an MP in my third term, 12 years now, I can tell you that we have sat to meet the 21-day requirements of CIs on even far less important matters, which do not even bother on constitutional rights. Mm. We, we, we are told to come and sit. You know, ordinarily, we don't sit on Mondays and weekends. Mm -hmm. But for allies to mature, mm -hmm, some of which we are now repealing today, like that ally, that obnoxious ally 2462, which allows forest, the, the, the president Mining to, in forest reserves. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All allies of that nature mm -hmm, have all been passed. We are called to come and sit Mondays, sometimes on Saturdays, so that these allies will meet the 21-day maturity period. So, let me so, ask, so, um, so, so look, the, the, the fact that the Electoral Commission it's just making excuses, passing the back. Then there was a, a day I asked the Attorney General a question in Parliament. He also came saying, don't blame me, uh, blame Electoral Commission. The local government ministry is also saying that, you know what, everybody is passing the back. Yeah. Nobody is taking responsibility. Meanwhile, as Professor Azar will say, the cardinal sin of this eight Parliament is the fact that it is the only Parliament in the history of our entire Republic which has been an incomplete parliament, a parliament which was not whole, a parliament which did not represent as many as four, com four communities. With over 17,000 uh, votes. I mean, I mean, and, 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 and we think that this is something that we should tolerate, we should accept. So we have been most unfair. And, and I think that it is so condemnable that the institutions which acted in such a crude manner, mm. without recourse to due process, without recourse to our constitution, the rights of the people. And they have even refused to, to, to take responsibility and to give us assurances that this will never occur in our history. It must be condemned by all of us. Let me and ask you very briefly. Do not deserve this. Let me ask you very briefly, and I'll get a response of Frank Davis. Uh, I, I mean, you say that this is a, a scar on our democracy. But what would you say to critics or skeptics who would argue that, okay, it's a scar, but at the end of the day, they are voting this year, so why don't we move on? No. Nobody, the four years, what they have lost, taxation without representation, they are citizens, they are rights. Look, I have a hazard here of 10th November 2023. Out of empathy, mm, my conscience feeling so bad, I had to file questions on their behalf because they have no representation. And the, this, this 10th November question I filed in 2023 had to do with their roads, their road network. Mm. And their roads minister, if you go through the, the column 104, you see the then roads minister, Nobu Amwakwata, saying that they have not been programmed yet, they don't have plans for them, but they are hoping that. Who was to follow up on all of this? Who was and to? this is just one sector. You know, so you can't quantify what they have lost. Members of parliament have access to the MP's common fund. And all of us, you see us on a daily basis. We are doing interventions, scholarships here. We are advocating on behalf of our constituents. We are representing them. We are making sure that if there are bad roads, if they need hospitals, if they need portable water, who wants to do all of this for them? Who wants to champion their cause? Meanwhile, they are also citizens. They have paid taxes. They continue to pay taxes, all including the obnoxious ones, the e-levies, the emission levy, the COVID tax, which should not be on our books. They are paid. And yet, nobody... Is representing them and championing their cause. Nobody is championing this is, this their is cause. This is an aberration. We should never have occurred. 